my summer bloomers. All of them, I think. I'm pretty sure I have them all out here. Welcome back, everybody. There's a little bit of color still going on. Some is about to fade, but new leaves should be coming after those. So I have some maintenance to do on my summer bloomers, and I thought, why not film this, take you along. I think you've seen most of them already, also because of blooms for you. But there are certain things happening like, hello, Tabasuco Tex saying goodbye to a spike, an old one. So things just have to be taken care of. I'm also going to be wiping with insecticidal soap. So let's get to it. As they say in Swahili, Mingi Kazi. That means a lot of work. So I have my little bucket of insecticide over there. This is the Spanish one. That is, this one is the concentrate. But you know, the spider mites and all the common things, it certainly didn't work against caterpillars last year, that's for sure. But for me, let's see, the active ingredient is something with P, Piratrina. And then there's Isaitidicolsa, which I will put up in, as a translation up here on the card. The prevention thing, none of them have any pest issues, which is great. But I must say that I'm not too, I'm not too impressed with their progress. I thought I was giving them enough fertilizer. So I still have some sphagnum moss up here to protect new roots from when they grow. And until I haven't figured out the how the white foam works, I will not be using that. So I shall continue with sphagnum moss for the time being on these guys, because currently they are growing active roots. Tabasco Tex. Somebody's been somebody's been munching. Somebody had a go. But first of all, let's do the cut. I always sterilize my scissors when I put them away. They are clean. And I'm gonna do the chop chop first and let them let the next alcohol evaporate while we work on other things. I could do the cinnamon, but we are we're out in the breeze. That's gonna dry off. I'm not going to mess with cinnamon on any kind of surface where roots can touch. No way. There is something actually growing down here. Look. Could that be a new spike? Right there. It's kind of odd next to the old spike. Maybe, maybe a root, maybe a new little plant. Who knows? We shall wait and see. But Tabasco Tex this year has given me a second spike, so that's fine. My fertilizer regime is with them as they need it. It's 300 ppm at uh, normally 5.8 because of my leka changing the pH as it absorbs it and wicks it up. My pH is quite high in my environment, so we have well water and it's unfortunate, but it's quite high. So the leka doesn't soak in pH of 6.3 or 7. It soaks in a pH of about 8.7. And as it is inert, it takes that and rides and rolls with it. Looks like I might be losing the bottom leaf here, not a problem. But this is what I'm planning to do here. All for all of them. And I don't think that would be something of interest to everybody to watch me work through this. So I'll just keep the camera rolling and then stop and start if I see something of interest. Tabasco Tex is done and can now dry off with some insecticide on him. We can have a look at Yin's Black Eagle. All right, one more time. In case the sound is so bad, I'm going to just keep rolling. It is not affected by anything. This is just prevention. As new growth start, once the blooms have finished, those new leaves are vulnerable. And I use a new cotton swab for each plant. Now sometimes roots can look nasty on the top here, but actually they're viable underneath. 
So I just hope for the best and leave them as they are. I don't interfere. And who would have taken bets I have an orchid with the name giraffe in it? This one is Zeng Min with the clone name Giraffe. And it bloomed straight away for me last year. It was fantastic to see the bloom. Smells of plastic flip-flops. <laughs> the smell is not something that I would say, oh, okay, but if you've just bought yourself a pair of flip-flops and you take them out of that plastic bag, that is the smell of giraffe. And I suppose that is also quite befitting because I wear a lot of flip-flops. So I'm very familiar with the smell. Now, giraffe hasn't given me any blooms this year. Growing spikes. Two more spikes I got from her this year. No blooms. But I also have two more little plantlets from her. that She started over the winter. There's one there. And one squashed in. Under here. How cool is that? She came from Schwerter, very badly damaged. This, this part you see here, that dried off leaf, it was completely snapped. The first spike was broken off. Ah, she was in bad shape when she arrived out of the packaging. It was horrendous. And there's some remnant damage as well. But she is definitely a little fighter and she's coming back with a vengeance and I'm glad. I don't mind if I don't get blooms this year. This little orchid is fighting hard and I'm so proud of her. So I flush mine as and when the orchid needs it. Every orchid is different so I look and see if the reservoir is empty and then I flush and then I fill up the reservoir again depending on whether there is active growth going on or not. And in this case, she's a thirsty one because she's busy. She's very busy. And she isn't done yet. Look at this. Let me see if I can show you. So we have a root coming out of that little plant up here. There's the root going down. I like that direction. Here it's trying to produce its own little spike. I like that. Underneath here is the other plant squeezing out from underneath there. And either that is its own little root coming or a spike. Either way, she is coming back with a vengeance and I like it. Thank you very much. Next up is my very, very weak little Speciosa crossed with Violacea dark. Very, very weak little plant. But she's trying. This one's also from Schwerter. She is trying. That funky looking leaf here was trying to grow in winter. Clearly very bad timing with a weak plant. Then this leaf started to develop further in spring. And this is the new leaf since then which is great. You can see how stressed the roots are, but she has growing root tips down here. And that to me is very, very important. So there are growing root tips. Now you can see I don't have her very much lowered in the pot. That's because I want to avoid any kind of infection in her stem. She was a very sorry, sorry looking little orchid when she arrived. Very bad. I felt terrible for her. Especially knowing that I thought that maybe her lack of vigor is going to work against me. But I think, I think we're getting it. I think together we are going to be able to pull each other through. Me with my doubts on this one. And she with her attempting to grow. I would like to see new root growth. But I'm happy to see a good leaf coming out. Not crinkled. Not damaged. 
that means that somewhere she's getting sustenance and that is important. Usually I don't have to worry about my orchids, what their state is in the pot, when I can see clearly a huge improvement from last year. Huge improvement. So what I'm doing now is going to just help her keep her safe from any pests that might want to attack a weak plant. So far we've been lucky. Very lucky. There you go. Isn't that a picture of cheeky faces? <laughs> oh, somebody else has been going for it. Okay. These always remind me of the Stooges. I love these little blooms. They have such cheeky faces on them. The little white on the top I see as eyes. I see a red nose there, a smile, and, and a security safety construction hat. <laughs> this is the Corno Survey Lady. No, wrong. This is Corno Survey Variety Chatela Day. I call her Lady Chatterley because she has that naughty look on her face. Her blooms know something, tisk tisk, that we don't. So I call her Lady Chatterley. And this one is just a very, very strong orchid. It's a pleasure to grow this one. Came to me, took off the first years. Let me show, see if I can turn it. This leaf and the opposite one in the back, right here. You see how small they are. Yeah, that I can understand acclimatizing and everything, but roots never skipped a beat. Arrived into the pot and root central and grew a spike straight away, the dimensions of which I found astounding. Look at that. Look at that spike. It's like thick, thick, thick. Not round thick, but it has, you know, it's not a spindly long thing like the other ones. This is cool. Very interesting. So far I have not repotted any of them. If there were to be a candidate for a repot one day, it would definitely be this one. And I just snapped a leaf there. Ooh, you gotta be so careful. So careful. Yeah, this one would definitely be a candidate for repotting, but I don't see the reason to just now. She's doing quite well as she is. Beautiful, beautiful. And the roots are continuing to go nuts, which is fabulous. Here's my little conundrum. Should be KTC Kao Kichakut, crossed with Corningiana. Um, yep, there's been some discussion in the comments section. In my book, she's a Corningiana, but Michael said that she's too narrow on the petals and sepals. Corningiara are fatter. Oh well, the first year when she bloomed, I was like, oh, for real? You know, another Schwerter thing. I've already got my opinion about them. And then this happened. Yeah, so I wasn't impressed. But this year she's doing much better in the bloom front. Last year her blooms were constantly cupped. They never really opened flat. So I was like, yeah, okay. This year the first bloom opened beautifully and flat and presented herself very well and then when the other ones opened they went all cupped again so it's a question of strength maybe who knows no new leaf from her yet but we'll make sure to take care of what we do have there's a bit of roughness on here i'm not quite happy with that's weird never felt that before but yeah just three. I could do with a new leaf soon. Right here. What's left? What's left of the blooming sweet memories? Gorgeous, gorgeous. Very happy with these. I bought two. My mistake. I thought I was only buying one. And I guess the order was so big 
that I didn't realize I had put two in my cart, you know? Add the cart syndrome. And then I had two. And now one is looking for a home. So if there are anybody out there in Europe that is looking to have a sweet memory, please let me know. My orchids are not for sale. A little FYI. Not for sale. But it would come, let me just say, it will come with one, two, three, four, five spikes, two marks of sunburn. Just have to, you know, throw that in because I would be keeping this one in the back here as she's a little bit smaller and I can accommodate her better. So that would be five, one, two, three, four, five spikes. And if there's anybody who wants her, let me know in the comments. I'm sorry I can't do like a, I'm not doing a draw or anything like that. First dibs, somebody and I have to check the time the comment was posted and I don't want to upset anybody. But, you know, these are not difficult to find. So everybody has, well, let me just reword that. These are not difficult to find. So it's, in my opinion, it's not like I could surprise somebody with a sweet memory because, every, again, everybody has one in inverted commas. But if you don't have one and you're in Europe, and please don't be upset if you said you wanted it and somebody came before. I don't want to upset anybody with this volunteering my sweet memory. But I do want to give the big one with the five spikes away. I don't have anybody that I can think of locally. And this would be my, the one I would keep. Three spikes. She's a little bit smaller. Maybe that's not going to last either. Maybe she will get big as well. But for now, I know I can accommodate if this is her maximum size, then I can accommodate that. Changing the moss. This is really my moss change time of year. The other plants benefit because I just throw it into the other pl plant pots. <laughs> Today is a great day for this job because I only have 28 degrees Celsius, but I have 75% humidity. Perfect day. The orchids are absolutely loving it. No wind. Everybody can take a little bit of a breather. Wonderful. And now we have done the best we can. She feels a bit light. That's typical after weighing this one. <laughs> so now we have done the best we can with what we've got available to us, preventative measures and changing the moss with my summer bloomers. So yeah. I would really appreciate it if you did stick around and watch all of it. Thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to be able to verbalize the thoughts as they come while fiddling with orchids. Perfect. For me, perfect. And I hope that uh, if you're still here that you enjoyed it as well. Next time I'll say pull up a chair, grab a coffee, let's talk. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate your company. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.